All right, so now we've looked at computer requirements for podcasts and talked about microphone types. But how do you put the two together? Well, first of all, if you're using a USB headset mic or any USB mic, all you have to do is plug the mic right into your Mac's USB port. From there, you can configure GarageBand to record from your USB mic, and you're pretty much ready to go. But what about mics that don't connect via USB? Most standard microphones use what's called an XLR connector. And these XLR connectors can't be plugged directly into your computer, so you'll need some kind of device to act as the middleman. An audio input device is simply a device that acts as a bridge between your mic and your computer. These can be simple devices that allow for just one microphone connection, but for podcasting, I suggest purchasing an audio interface that can accept at least two audio inputs. So if you ever want to do multi-track recording, like for an interview, you'll be able to do so. A good place to start is with something like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It currently costs about $130. You can plug regular XLR microphone cables and quarter-inch instrument cables directly into it without having to worry about adapters, and it accepts two inputs at a time, which means you can use it for multi-track recording. It connects to your Mac via USB, which is also where it gets its power, so in turn, it can also supply phantom power to condenser mics. If you need more simultaneous inputs, you can find models from a multitude of other companies. For example, the PreSonus AudioBox 44 VSL has four XLR and instrument inputs. And you can find other devices that support more than a dozen simultaneous inputs, although you most likely won't need that many to record your podcast. Ideally, you want a device that provides enough inputs for the number of mics you expect to use simultaneously while recording your show. If you're going to be interviewing two people, for example, it would make sense to have three microphones going at once, one for you and one for each of your guests. But if you don't see yourself using that many mics simultaneously, there's no need to spend the money on a device with more than two inputs. But you definitely need an audio input device. Now, if you're still leaning towards a USB headset that plugs directly into your Mac, let me make one last argument for audio input devices. For me, the most compelling reason to recommend using an audio interface is for their built-in preamps. When you simply plug a microphone into your computer, you get just that, the signal from the microphone into the computer. The problem is, most signals coming out of microphones are weak electrical signals. What a preamp does is it takes the signal and amplifies it prior to it reaching its destination or another amp, hence the name preamp. This amplification is also referred to as raising the signal's gain. A good microphone preamp can really improve the quality and warmness of an audio signal. In fact, some specific mic pre's are highly sought after by professional studios because of the quality they give to mics. Now, there are some USB mics that have decent and even very good sound quality, like the Blue Yeti or the Rode Procaster we looked at in a previous movie. But if you want the flexibility to use different types of mics or to be able to record instruments like guitars into your Mac, then it's still a good idea to go with an audio input device. Remember, it's ultimately going to be your voice on that podcast, and you want it to sound good. So do yourself a favor and record a decent mic through an audio interface device. Your podcast will sound a whole lot better.